Going for auto sequence start. T minus 25 seconds and counting. The sequencer on board now controlling the final seconds. T minus 17 seconds and counting. The body flap and speed breaker in launch position. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. We go for main engine start. We have main engine start and the ignition and liftoff, liftoff of STS-7 and America's first woman astronaut. And the shuttle has pulled the tower. Astronaut Sally Ride's greatest achievements were to provide a positive role model for girls and to promote their enrollment in STEM fields. Ride was the first female American astronaut to enter into space. Being the first American female in space, she was able to inspire young women to follow their aspirations and not let being a female affect what they wanted to accomplish in life. Sally K. Ride was born on May 26, 1951 in Los Angeles, California. Her parents' names were Joyce Rice and Dale B. Ride, and her sister's name is Bear. Her partner's name was Tom O'Shaughnessy. Besides being a female astronaut, Ride liked to play sports. She played tennis, volleyball, softball, as well as liked to run. One of her other hobbies included stamp collecting. Ride went to high school at Westlake High School and graduated in 1968, which was located in Los Angeles, California. She then went on to college and graduated from Stanford University in 1973. While at Stanford, she was on the varsity tennis team. She graduated with a Bachelor of Science in Physics as well as a Bachelor of Arts in English. Ride got her master's in 1975, which included a master's of science, and then received another master's degree in 1978, which was a doctorate in physics. Sally K. Ride's first experience with NASA was when she saw a newspaper ad for NASA astronauts. She decided to turn in an application, with no expectations of getting selected. Over 8,000 entered, and she was one of 35 chosen. Her astronaut career took off from there. She joined Astronaut Corps and became an astronaut candidate by NASA in January of 1978. Her work included being involved with the ground-based capsule communicator for the missions SDS-2 and SDS-3, which its sole purpose was the development of the space shuttle's robotic arm. In August of 1979, she completed her one-year training period and evaluation period. This allowed her to be eligible to be a mission specialist on a space shuttle flight cruise. As a mission specialist, the main work is with the commander and pilot and having the responsibility for operations surrounding things like systems, crew activity training, usage, and other operations. One of the largest struggles Ride faced before her first flight was dealing with sexism from the press. At press conferences, she would be bombarded with ridiculous sexist questions such as, would spaceflight affect your reproductive organs? Did she plan to have children? Would she wear a bra or makeup in space? Did she cry on the job? And how would she deal with menstruation in space? One reporter even asked her if a hundred tampons would be enough for seven days for a seven-day mission. But Ride always did an excellent job of keeping her cool and redirecting the interview back to discussing the mission. Sally was pretty focused on the mission. I'm sure that was in the back of her mind, but she didn't let it stand in the way of just doing the tasks that were assigned to her. And if you can imagine. You train for well over a year to fly those flights, and you only have, in that case, six days to do a whole bunch of things. So you hit the deck running, and you're busy throughout. On the other hand, I'm pretty sure that Sally was aware of her position, and she certainly did want to inspire young women to do what they wanted to do in terms of career goals. So I think she wanted to be an inspiration to them. She wanted to encourage them to pursue those goals just like uh, anyone would do. Uh, prior to that, of course, there had, to our 78 group, there had been no women in the program, and so she certainly was a trendsetter. Sally K. Ride's first mission into space was June 18, 1983. She was aboard the STS-7 as a mission commander. She was the first person to fly from her astronaut class. This mission was the second flight of the Orbiter Challenge, as well as it being the first mission that had five-person crew. On this mission, they deployed satellites from Canada and Indonesia, operated the remote manipulator system to perform the first deployment and retrieval exercise with the shuttle pallet satellite, conducted the first formation flying of the Orbiter with free-flying satellite, 
carried and operated the first U.S.-German co cooperative materials science payload, continued flow extraparesis system, monodispersed latex reactors, activate, and activated seven gateway specials. The mission duration was a total of 147 hours, which is about six days. On October 5, 1984, Ride burst into space in the Challenger once again. She served as a mission specialist, but was not the only woman to be aboard this time. Kathy Sullivan was also a mission specialist on this trip and became the first woman to complete a spacewalk. On STS-41G, there were seven crew members, the largest crew to this day. During the eight-day mission, the crew conducted scientific observations of the Earth and worked on the Earth Radiation Budget Satellite and large format camera. They also demonstrated potential satellite refueling with a spacewalk done by Kathy Sullivan. The mission lasted a total of 197 hours and landed at the Kennedy Space Center on the 13th of October. Ride was on the roster for another mission when the Challenger exploded on January 28, 1986. The program was suspended pending an investigation and Ride would go to on to retire the next year. In reaction to the incident, President Ronald Reagan formed a panel of scientists, astronauts, and engineers to investigate the accident. Rad was appointed to this panel and helped unearth the truth that there had been signs of trouble on earlier Challenger flights, but that they had been dismissed as not critical. In 2001, Rad and her partners, Dr. Tam O'Shaughnessy and Dr. Karen Flamer, established Sally Ride Science to pursue Rad's true passion, trying to interest young people, especially girls and minorities, in the fields of science, technology, engineering, and math. Sally Ride Science has gone on to provide science-oriented school programming, science-based summer camp, learning materials, and teacher training to improve STEM literacy and to inspire more students to stick with STEM fields. In Ride's words, their mission is to make science and engineering cool again. Sally K. Ride died July 23, 2012. She created a legacy for herself and was able to be the inspiration and a major influence in the science and space field, as well as become a role model to young girls everywhere. Her accomplishments helped change science for the better. Sally Ride broke barriers with grace and professionalism and literally changed the face of America's space program, said NASA Administrator Charles Borden. The nation has lost one of its finest leaders, teachers, and explorers. Our thoughts and prayers are with Sally's family and the many she inspired. She will be missed, but her star will always shine brightly. A true American pioneer died today of cancer. Sally Ride, the first American woman to fly in space. It was nearly 30 years ago. There was towering pressure on her to perform every maneuver perfectly, and she did, proving that women were also born with the right stuff.